uh, kind of the chat feature and monitoring comments and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good morning, everybody. Those that I recognize, those that I don't, those that may be watching later. I'm Corey, and uh, I'm I'm hosting this uh, this fun little discussion on social media best practices today. Social media is a wild world, and there's still a, a lot that's being developed. Um, even as we speak today, at the time of this recording, we're going to be talking about some really interesting changes that have been happening with uh, some of the different platforms. And uh, so I'm excited to share those with you and just help you run your business using social media, if just a little bit more effectively. That's my goal today. So great. Stacy, to uh, introduce yourself real quick and we'll get going. Good morning. I'm Stacy, and I am the one that's going to be interacting with you in the chat on Zoom and also Facebook. So if you have any questions, drop them and I'll make sure they get answered. Awesome. This is week four, Corey. Are we excited? This Let's is it. do it, man. I'm excited. So this is week four of four social media best practices. If you pay close attention and you've been tracking with the homework micro type assignments, um, you'll, you'll get really blessed. I'm just telling you right now, just pay attention because you're going to have some goodies coming up. Timothy Morgan, founder, CEO of Giver Marketing and the Network. This is Corey Michael. Uh, he just introduced himself. He's a branding and efficiency specialist. Also is real, real big part of team coordination within the Giver Marketing Network. Really appreciate that um, as far as connecting with team members and interns and all that. Here's, here's the goodies I just mentioned. And uh, we, we put our heads together. Some team members have put their talents together to be able to say, hey, if you track with this 30-day challenge, this is session four of four. If you track with this 30 day challenge and you, and you do the micro assignments that will help your organization, then guess what? You're gonna get blessed with 30 minute session from a certified marketing uh, coach and a visibility service for three months and graphic design service for one month upon request. And we're glad to be able to help you uh, kind of take your game to another level when it comes to marketing. These are the challenges. This is the screenshot you want to take. This is the notes you want to take. These are the challenges that are uh, the micro assignments, the action assignments that are required for you to earn that reward we just talked about, okay? There's seven of them total. Um, there's only four sessions, but there's seven micro assignments. That's what you need to remember. There's a, there's a front loaded micro assignment collage. Uh, <laughs> a, 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 a smattering of micro assignments on that first session. So there's seven micro assignments total. If you have any questions about any of these, you can uh, connect with Stacy, make a comment, uh, talk to Corey, myself, uh, whoever you can get a hold of will be able to help you kind of walk this journey of earning that reward and also just exploding your business. So we're excited about that. Corey, you, you and I and a few others have been able to dive into the Giver Marketing Blueprint this month, LinkedIn appointments. If last week you did efficiency tools and tips and really led us in that. And then this week you're gonna drill down on some just some really basic social media best practices to take your, you know, take you from good to great and just kind of keep going, right? Yep. <laughs> The recordings and the assignments will be held in the private Facebook group. You're either there right now or you've been there before. That's why you have access to this. So you want to go to the private Facebook group and see how others are posting their micro assignments, asking questions. You might be able to get more questions answered than you could ever realize by going into that Facebook private group. And it's Giver Marketing Private Group. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, but there's also a, a short link at the bottom of just about every screen that you see. Do we have a marketing strategy, Corey? How, how do we know if we have a marketing strategy? How does this I sure work? hope so, because uh, if you don't have a marketing strategy, then doing marketing is going to be a little tough. Unfortunately, uh, as you know, Tim, in our experience with, a, with just hundreds, maybe even into the thousands at this point of, of businesses that we've been working with over the years, uh, a lot of businesses, nonprofits, churches of all sizes uh, kind of approach marketing like uh, like trying to set New Year's resolutions 
the beginning of the year, you've got good intentions, but then you fall flat uh, within like a week or so or the statistics, I think. And um, marketing is often treated uh, very similarly. So the thing we definitely want to make sure that, that you at least begin to conceptualize this morning is to get a marketing strategy. Um, and, you know, that's what this whole 30 day challenge is about is, is about developing a strategy, starting really with our, our kind of pillar, uh, blueprint, which is, is that foundation, that four part foundation, the, the having branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing as part of your, from A to Z marketing strategy, it encompasses social media efforts and encompasses tools and apps It encompasses personal interactions, literally everything uh, starts with those four things. We go more over that in the first week of the month. So you'll definitely want to check that out. Um, if you haven't already, just to, just to go over those pieces real quickly, um, each of those, so that it gives us a little bit context into, um, into today's training. Um, and you can actually go back to the next slide, Tim. Um, so we're going to just cover each of those four pieces real briefly. The branding piece, this three, the three C's of branding to, to keep in mind when you're doing anything, social media or offline or whatever, got to have clarity where you have easy to understand messaging where people can actually know what it is you're selling, how they get in contact with you, how they take the next step. You, you got to, um, one of our our mentors, Donald Miller, always says, if you confuse, you lose and, and noise is the enemy. So make sure that um, you've got clarity, creativity, stand out from the crowd. We like to say that you're going to reach people nobody else is reaching by doing things nobody else is doing. So don't be afraid to uh, to try new things that that maybe other people in your industry are not even thinking about. And, and even with uh, visual presentation, graphics and, and video and whatnot, maybe it's a little bit different than um, what people are doing in your industry. That is 100% okay. Got to be creative if you want to stand out. And then consistency, having a a consistent rhythm of execution, which includes not just posting schedule or how often you're posting, but a rhythm of the voice you're using to post, a rhythm of, of uh, a consistency in the information that's actually being produced and put out there, again, in person or offline or online, whatever it may be, uh, having that, that consistency is key as well. Corey, I want to make a quick mention here with yeah. this particular slide. Uh, it seems that, at least to me, and, 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 and as we've had some conversations over the years, is this is almost like a really simple personality test. And so if, if you're strong in one of these, that's okay. Embrace it. This is what I'm great at. If you're kind of so-so in another one, that might be a, a secondary part of your personality. That's fine. But if you're not strong in one of these, embrace that too and say, look, I want to reach out to somebody for help. I need consistency. So maybe I need a, a like a coach or a mentor or, or a guide or something. Creativity. Maybe I need somebody to come in and actually help me ideate and get some creativity going. Clarity. You know, we can go on and on. But the point is, embrace the strength of this slide and then understand kind of your, 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 your weak points. John Maxwell says, hire to your weak points. And so this might be something yep. to consider when you're bringing on team members and others for, for, for your marketing efforts. Yep, that's good. Second piece of the, the, the blueprint is the visibility factor, just making sure that you can be found online. Your website is the best place to start because you own 100% of it. You can do what you want, put whatever content you want. There are no rules. Uh, to that. Um, and then there's the free platforms and directories that are out there, which is essentially digital real estate, rental real estate. So you're renting spaces for free, but it's not yours to own. You got to follow the rules and the guidelines. Otherwise, you know, you can get consequences. Uh, and, and there's also limitations of what you can really do. So all of these are staple staple platforms. Probably everybody watching this has heard of every single one of these, so I'm not going to cover them. But make sure that if you can be found on something, you should be found on something. Doesn't mean you need to use them all, and you don't have to operate on seven different platforms all at once, but having a presence so you can be visible is the key piece. And we talk more about that in the blueprint as well. The promotion uh, piece of the blueprint, um, there's a three-part 
Um, just this is, a, a, again, a minor part of the fuller training on this. But if you can think of the ICE guideline when you're doing any kind of promotions out there, it's not just blasting your product or your service out there with the price and here's here's what you're going to get is it really there's there's three pieces of it there's informing people where you're letting people know here's who we are this is what we offer there's the call to action which is the cta you may have heard of it referred to before which is encouraging people to take some step towards your goal of them interacting with you. So maybe it's call now or buy today or mention this ad for 10% off or something that makes people go, oh yes, that is what I need to do to actually get in touch. You're informing them to invite them into a call to action so that the third piece, you can engage with them and have a dialogue with them, whether that's through an email nurturing sequence or that's through a, a, a phone call or um, a meet up in person, whatever is right for your business, you are earning the right to engage with folks, even through social media, putting content out there that invites people into an engagement process with you, which leads to the fourth piece of the blueprint, which is the nurturing piece where once you have that opportunity to engage with people, you've been given the right to do that. You, you, this is a follow-up system that we use for nurturing prospects um, that, that's by no means exhaustive, but these are the seven that we've found to be the most common um, that you can use these as well. Initial introductions to each other, brief emails, social media connections, giving gifts or, or IP that is valuable for one another, uh, inviting people somewhere that you will be, sending personal notes without pitching, a quick phone call. These are all examples of ways to continue intentional, engaging conversations with, uh, with your prospects, um, which then of course leads us to today and our training today on social media. All of those pieces that we just went through are the foundation and the backbone of, of everything we're gonna talk about today. So buckle up, we're gonna, we're gonna go through a lot of information today. Um, there's some hot off the press info. Th Timothy, thanks for buckling, buckling up there, appreciate that. Um, uh, we're, we're gonna be going through um, a couple of different platforms in particular, um, but, but no matter which platform it is that you're most comfortable with, that you use the most, whatever, the idea here is to, first of all, don't just do social, but be social. There is the word social in social media for a reason. It is so that we as humans can interact with other humans, even if we're using our business at, or church or nonprofit uh, accounts as the vehicle to be able to do so. But just remember that, don't make it a task list item, make it change your mindset this morning, everybody, to, to, to go, you know what, this is an opportunity for us to connect with people. This is kind of off script here for a minute, but if you truly believe that what it is that you offer can change lives and you are looking for an opportunity to, uh, to help others in some way, then the task will turn into a mandate for you in your conscience uh, to, to connect with people in meaningful ways and not just put fluff out there. Preach it. Hey, listen, if you agree with what Corey just said, put an amen in the comments or the chat box. We want to make sure that you're engaged and listening and understand exactly where we're going here as far as leveraging your social media and just your messaging and all that. Yep, absolutely. So we're going to break this down into a few uh, different categories today. So the first one is identity and messaging. Part of the marketing strategy, you got to know who you are and who you serve in order to more effectively uh, put content out there in your social platform. So when it comes to identity and messaging, there's three different areas to consider. The first is to identify your audience, right? Your, your target audience. Now, a lot of people think of target audience in terms of demographic, um, which is who they are, how old they are, maybe their income, what area they live in. All of that is important, but we like to encourage people to think more about psychographics compared to demographics. Psychographic is how people are thinking, what people are feeling, how, what is it that makes people tick? And, and to these, these points here, what is your ideal customer's biggest pain point that you are trying to solve that is causing certain feelings inside of them? What emotions 
are you addressing? What is it that they ultimately want that you are providing? It's very important to identify who your audience is in this way, because not no matter what you say, not everyone is your, your target audience. You could have you could have items or services or whatever that can have a general broad appeal, but especially as as small business owners to begin with and and then even even into uh, certain categories of very very large enterprises the niche the, the 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 impact is in the niche the the target people is where you're going to find the most impact and income as you as you engage as you post content as you get customers so think about who your audience is and identify with their emotions and their pain points and what it is that they ultimately want. The second piece of identity and messaging is to become a storyteller and not just a service seller. Testimonials, stories, video testimonials, uh, and and uh, even even text to a degree. Just you know conversations that you have with clients, whatever it may be. You want to tell the stories because you're uh, of, of how your business is impacting people. You don't want to just sell your your stuff all the time. What you're looking to do is position your business as a guide. This is how we helped this person achieve this goal that helped them live a better life. You dear business owner, are not the hero. Although it may be tempting to think of ourselves as the hero because we're the ones saving our customers, but our goal is to guide them into success. What is the villain and how is your customer the hero? Think through because it's not you. <laughs> if you're doing it right, you are the guide. If, you, if you're a Star Wars fan, um, you maybe can recognize this. Yoda was the guide for Luke who then defeated evil, right? So we are, we're all Yodas. That, that is our place. We are all green little creatures guiding our customers and our clients into success. Highlight how your product and service solves problems, not just offers solutions. What is the value that people are getting from working with you and not just the tasks that you are providing? What are the stories of transformation in your business or church or nonprofits? life, no matter how big you are, a solopreneur or a multi-million dollar business. The third piece of this is to be human. Find your voice. What What is it that you, when, you, when, when you're posting online and people are seeing these posts, what is it that you want people to think about your business in terms of how you sound? Is it warm and friendly? Is it a uh, business professional? Is it quirky? Well, it, there is no wrong answer as, as long as it matches who you are as a person and, and what you're trying to, to get across in your business and avoid ins insider language. Like, like we, it's really easy for us to get wrapped up in all of the, the language we use within our industry. And we think it makes us sound super smart. Uh, hint here, it doesn't. <laughs> people, people want to know really quickly really easy, easily, what is you do, how you serve them, and how to get connected to you. The easier it is, studies show that the easier it is for people to understand you, the easier it is for people to trust you. So avoid that insider language and, and let people be a part of the conversation. Love, um, and love, then that love, third part is this. start a dialogue with your audience. Don't just talk at them. You want to use language that lets people again, understand and then be in dialogue with you. So Corey, let's be, let's be real here and have a quick conversation as we, as we kind have of, have I not been real so far? No, this is, this is good, <laughs> this is good but how, how much practice does it take to do this? Just this one piece right here. Can you explain a little bit of how, how this develops as kind of a brand develops and, 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 and doing this? Yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to the first piece of this. What is your, what is, what is the identity uh, that you, that you have and, and, and identifying your audience. So, so your voice will need to match who your audience is as well. So I'll, I'll give a, a couple of examples. Um, there's a client uh, that, that we have that is a, a, a diabetes uh, health coach specifically for veterans and, and she, the voice that she has, she's had to develop 
to be empathetic, warm, and helpful. Then there's, uh, and then there's um, uh, another uh, client that is a real estate agent who's a very high performing, highly focused, driven type of individual who his social posts are, they're not aggressive, but they're assertive and they are straight to the point. And because that's his clientele, they want straight to the point. They want to know exactly what they want to know. And so that's what he delivers. So it goes back to your target audience, how you're wired. And it does take practice. You're, you're not going to get it right the first time. And that's okay. Um, it is an always, you will never fully reach who your, your, your final voice. The idea is to keep evolving as your target evolves. So I even think of like, um, like Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola, they're, they're famous for the nostalgic kind of feel and, and, you know, when their commercials come on, uh, they, or even posts that they make, you know, the videos that they have are like, there's like an Instagram filter over the whole thing. And there's, and there's nostalgic music, whatever that that's kind of how they're branding themselves and what their communication is, but that hasn't always been their branding campaign. Their voice has evolved over time. So it's, it's a constantly evolving process. Great, great, great. So when it comes to, before we get into some of the more practical side of things uh, this morning, a couple of important things to note. One is having a, a social strategy that is 80-20. A lot of you have probably heard this, this phrase before, maybe in context of social media, maybe not, uh, maybe in, in relation to other things, but 80% of the content you post should be informative and entertaining and useful in the name of being social, not doing social, right? We're, we're trying to interact with people, provide value, provide content that helps people. 80% of the content you post should be informative, entertaining, and useful, even humorous in some ways. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of that in a minute. Um, and 20% can be selling and self-promotionally because that, and that's a very important piece. You can't forget to make the sale or to ask for the sale just because you're trying to focus heavily on value and content that adds value uh, to, to your followers. So 80, 20% rule will, will be a good guide for you. So four out of every five posts to be in that 80% um, will, will help you put stuff out there that people care about and will build their trust with you. All right. Content planning and creation. We've got a few things we're going to go through here to help you with that whole content planning process. Cause a lot of, one of the questions we get most or a, a lot of times is what the heck do I even post? <laughs> what, where do I get ideas from? What, what do I do? And so here's three ways just real easily take a screenshot of this that you can literally, literally find endless content ideas. The first is you can join Facebook and LinkedIn groups where your ideal customer lives. So um, before I move on to that, so just to bring clar clarification to that in, in Facebook and in, in LinkedIn in particular, um, these two, there are groups you can join, right? Everybody knows we, you can join groups or most people know you can join groups that are, are uh, affinity groups or, um, you know, there, there's groups for homeowners, there's groups for business owners, there's groups for just gardeners. There, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of different groups out there. Whoever your target audience is are living in some of these groups. Um, they go there, they interact, they ask questions, they need help. So if you find those groups, both Facebook and LinkedIn groups have a search tool specifically within the group to be able to look for content or, or people. So you can use in, in quotations, how do I, what do I, why is the, for example, again, depending on, on what your, your target is. Um, and when you type those in, you will see people that have ever asked those kinds of questions before, which gives you ammo not to reach out to them necessarily, but but to know, okay, these are kind of, these are real questions that people have that I can totally make content about. I'm going to make a, a content answering this question and posting it in my feed, even though that person that you're getting the idea from may never actually see the the post that you make. That's not the point. The point is 
if one person in this one group has that question, you can be guaranteed that 10 more for every one person has the same exact question in what you do about your industry, whatever it may be, a DI, you know, how do I, what do I, why is the, so you're posting that content super relevant to people that are following you on your various feeds. The second is browse Quora for relevant discussions. Um, very similarly, it, it, but this is, Quora is like the internet's Besides Reddit, which is another place to look, I should probably add Reddit into this, Quora and Reddit are giant forums where people are asking questions all the time related to just about anything you can think of that you can type in your keyword uh, into the forum search essentially and see what people are talking about it and get a lot of ideas that way as well. And then the third is use answer the public to see real Google searches. This is a tool that we'll, we'll cover a little bit more in depth at the end of this presentation today. Um, but answer the public is essentially a, a search engine of search engine queries. So, so you type in your keyword that you want to know and it will spit out for you dozens and dozens and dozens of actual searches people are using Google for to, to find answers to questions related to your keyword and industry specific. Corey, let's take a deep breath right here. Deep breath right here. Because uh, as we get into these formats, people are probably going to feel, you know, we're always trying to monitor how we're feeling, right? And being aware of, of the momentum and the motivation factors. What, 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 do we, what should we address here when it comes to uh, maybe that overwhelmed feeling around social media? Yeah, well, there's there's for sure a lot to it. So we're not going to pretend like it's this it's this simple creature. However, going back to marketing strategy, if you have a strategy, however you're you're laying it out, whether it's a Google spreadsheet or it's a tool like Airtable or Trello or some kind of project management tool, and you you start to get your thoughts organized then you'll feel a lot less overwhelmed. But the key is having that strategy. And that's why we're going through all these different pieces of strategy here with everyone this morning. So, uh, you know, even in your content idea, I was just describing, just write them all out in a, in a Google spreadsheet just to start so that way you can see what it is that you want to post about. The next piece of this is there's a lot of different formats that you can, that you can post about or you can make your posts uh, using these different ideas. So of course we know video, of course we know photos and graphics, there's blog articles, there's checklists, there's polls. Um, at the time of this recording, there is well over a dozen, maybe even um, uh, more than 20 different types, <coughs> excuse me, of, of posts that you can make um, to, to add a little flavor to the posts that you're making, the content that you're putting out there on, on all of your social platforms. In general, live video and pre-recorded video perform the best live video the most. Uh, when, when you are putting content out there, that is what all of the social platforms algorithms favor at, at this time. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I mean, TikTok is a, is a video format specifically. Live video is great. Pre-recorded video is awesome. It shows human emotions. It lets people connect with you differently. Photos are great too. Um, helpful checklist articles or PDFs. Those are always great too. Polls can get the engagement. The idea is that use the tools available to you to not just post text as every single post or a photo as every single post. You want to stop the scroll is the uh, is the phrase. You want to stop the scroll. You want to make people as they're just kind of mindlessly scrolling through things, uh, stop and look at what it is that, that you have to say. So with those post ideas, there are there are a number of different ways that um, you can present them as, as categories. So, so we talked about the content ideas themselves. We've talked about formats. And now here's some different categories that you can also mark down in your Google sheet as well. So humorous, people love to laugh. People like to, to have little quirky stuff here and there. And, and if it's poking fun at yourself or your industry, 
you know, that's always great. So, so these are just quick ones that I found just by Googling them. You know, uh, I, I think I typed in roofing meme and these are called memes specifically, uh, or insurance memes or dentist memes. You could literally find a ton out there related to your industry. And there are tools that you could create your own if you've got a, uh, a humorous bone uh, to help you help you create your own content that way. Uh, another category is, um, if you want to go to the next one there, Tim, <clears throat> inspirational. Everyone loves a good quote, an inspirational quote. You could have motivation for Monday or, or Wednesday wisdom or Friday feel good, right? I just gave you three ideas right there. The idea is that, that you have quotes that you're posting. Again, they can be ones that you make on, with a tool such as Canva, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. You can find billions of them out there and on the interwebs uh but if you if you want to add a little uh value add that's encouragement to your feed that you're that you're posting feel free to find inspirational quotes out there there's there are a lot of them educational it's always good to let again people know who you are what you do um but not just that but about your just helpful tips about your industry life insurance 101 here's what recycling actually means here's how to eat healthy they can be presented in infographics like you see in the middle it can be an article with an eye-catching picture as you see on the right it can be just like a little kind of quote image like you see on the left there the uh, but the, the the purpose is that you are are educating people though here's here's what i'll say the worst customers are the ones that don't truly understand who you are and what you do. They maybe, maybe they, for whatever reason, I'm not even going to offer reasons why, because that's not the purpose of this training today, but, but the more you can educate people on what you do, the better it is will, and it will be for you in your, whatever it is that you do for a living and with your business and, and no matter how big you are. Educational posts are great. User-generated content, UGC, you might see it referred to as sometimes. This is the idea that um, there are people that are your super fans that love what you do. Maybe they're posting a, a picture of your product or, or um, posting a picture of themselves as a beneficiary of your service you provide. And they're tagging you and using some hashtags on whatever platform it is. The idea is that you share it to your business platforms and your personal one, if you want as well, if, that, if that's the kind of industry you're in, that shows people what we were referring to earlier, um, people understanding what you do and it's actually helping them. Like these, this is the, the telling of the stories. Um, and, and this, when they tag you, their friends all see you. If you share it, it's going to show their friends that you shared it and so there's a lot of mutual sharing and visibility that's happening and it's not words that you have to come up with you're just sharing stuff that's already made that's already generated by your users um, that can be super powerful as well if this is done right it can it can really be powerful just like a lot of these other tips but but this one right here can save you a ton of time at a ton of credibility Yep. and be extremely interesting in welcoming more conversations. I love it. I love it. Promotional. Don't need to talk too much about this one, but just as an idea for you, having images that are bright and colorful and say exactly what your sale is and, and can link people, excuse me, to uh, to your your website or wherever it is you're selling promo items, think, think creative with them. There's a lot of stock photography websites out there that don't just have photography, but also images like this that you can edit. You can use Canva for things like this. You could hire a graphic designer, um, but make them, make them look good. You, you want to put your best foot forward in your promo items. And then the last post category type example is the personal. Yes, it is okay for you as a freelancer, all the way up to the, being the CEO of a very large corporation to post behind the scenes, personal, here's from our family to yours, Merry Christmas, or hey, just doing a live. I wanted to highlight one of our employees who's doing a really great job this month and, and, and you know, or whatever it may be, a little, pulling back the curtain, people love that kind of stuff. People want to connect to people, not just to businesses. So, so don't be afraid to get a little vulnerable. If you're uncomfortable on camera, 
practice a little bit and, and make a video. We talk about that in our, our blueprint session. Um, but, but those categories are a place to start for you uh, uh, putting content out there that's gonna really start engaging with people. All right, another question that we get asked all the time is about follower and fan acquisition. How do we get more followers? How do we get more likes? How do we get more people? So first of all, most people maybe know this, but a lot of people maybe don't. More followers does not equal more sales. It doesn't equal more engagement. It doesn't equal more money. It doesn't equal more anything at all. Followers does not mean more sales. That is the myth. In reality, it is better to have 500 actively engaged followers than 10,000 followers who don't know who you are, what you do, or even care because the content being put out there isn't relevant to them or, or there's not engagement tactics in there, whatever it is. You could, if, if you only had 500 followers or 100 followers, or, you know, when you're just starting out, it is better to have them be actively engaged uh, super fans than have thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of, of, of followers out there. That is a fact. We've seen it over and over again. And, and we've got some uh, ideas, however, into this to help you. If you, if you never started anywhere before, uh, we've worked with customers and clients of all sizes that don't have any kind of presence online. So th th there's a couple things that we recommend to start. Facebook page and LinkedIn are the two that we typically rec recommend. With Facebook in general, they have their uh, their business profile, you know, pages that that you can uh, that you can create. It's kind of like um, a living brochure uh, that that is just you know being updated with different things. But it is not something to be relied on how uh, for for driving that engagement. It's the content to go back to everything we just talked about for the past twenty minutes. However. We want to, to give you a couple of ideas and strategies for growth hacking or growth strategy. Um, just, we're going to start with Facebook here for just a minute. Um, Timothy does one on a whole training on this on LinkedIn the second week of the month. So you'll want to go catch that when he does it. But for Facebook, um, you'll see in parentheses here that it says do it now. And there's two reasons for this. One is... There's no better time than to start yesterday. <laughs> so do it today uh, to start growing your page. But secondly, at the time of this recording, Facebook is making some massive changes and overhauls to how their business profiles work. So right now, invite people, invite your friends, invite your family, and invite your fans to like your business page. You go to your, you go to your page on Facebook, you click, um, the tab is called community. You click uh, invite friends, select all your friends, sit in the invite button, and you're going to get maybe maybe 5 to 10% of everybody you invite to actually like your page. The reason why that's important to do it now is because in a matter of months, again, from the time of this recording, Facebook is getting, a, getting rid of likes, which sounds scary, but there's currently two metrics of engagement. They have likes and they have followers, and all of your likes will be converted into followers, which is good news for us business owners because business pages have slowly been um, becoming less quality for us in terms of uh, visibility and, and placing in the algorithms. And, and, you know, a lot of people have been kind of freaking out for a little while about like, what's going to happen with my business page? What's the point? Why do I even post content if people are not, not even seeing it really? Well, potentially here, there's going to be some really good changes for business pages. So in the meantime, get as many people as you can to like the page, even if they're not the quality, the quality kind yet, we're starting to quantity because they'll be in, in uh, they'll be turned into followers when the shift happens and then followers actually see what it is that you're posting. So that's all the information literally that I have at this point. We, they, Facebook literally just dropped this info a couple of weeks ago. We will for sure keep you updated in our Facebook group as well. Um, if you're not part of that already, make sure you join because I'll be keeping everybody updated on those changes. But this for right now is a great way to start growing your Facebook uh, follower count. The second uh, thing I wanted to talk about with this is Instagram discoverability and growth. So for a long, long, long time, 
ever since pretty much Instagram's conception, hashtags were the way to be discovered. And it's always been kind of a, uh, an amoeba, a mythical creature, these hashtags, because there's, there's, there's ideas about how to use them in a way that gets you found, which are valid people, but, but they haven't been the, the best that Instagram has found for being discovered. Well, uh, about six weeks ago, they, they released another feature where you can actually use search keywords to find things, businesses, people, services. So not just hashtags, but actual keywords like you're searching on Google, not quite as long phrases, but just a, a few different keywords. And so if you use keywords inside of your captions that you're creating, so thinking through with intentionality, the captions that you're making, uh, Instagram's uh, algorithms and, and machine learning can actually see these captions and, and pull out both direct and indirect references to your to your in your captions related to the keywords that people are searching for, which is wild that they've finally done this. <laughs> I think they maybe heard the cry for it from uh, from business owners in particular because they're trying to monetize that platform. Um, but think through as you're thinking through your Instagram strategy, hashtags as well as keywords inside of your captions. All right. So now engagement. Now we, we've talked about a lot of different things so far today. The question though is how do businesses actually make money from social media, whatever the platform is? How, how do businesses do it? The answer is twofold. It's, in, it's creating engaging content, very important because people want to know good stuff, but then also having engaged business owners. This is not, if you're going to truly be successful on social media, it is not a set it and forget it, post it and don't follow up. You got to be engaged as a business owner or have somebody on your team that represents you and the business well, that has the right voice, the right approach that can represent your company um, in the social media realm. So here's a few ways to engage with your followers and fans. Again, whether it's you or you have a team member or a whole department that does this for you. First of all, very important, respond to every single comment on your post. People are taking time to, to say, hey, that's awesome or very cool or um, ask a question. Whatever it is, you want to respond to every comment and yes, even the negative ones. Your approach to the negative ones, if somebody leaves a negative comment or they're just a troll, well, trolls, you know, you you got to, it, it depends on, on what kind of trolling they're doing, but there's always going to be jerks out there and just kind of expect it. But if it's somebody that truly has just had a negative experience with you responding with, hey, Timothy, so sorry to hear this was your, uh, sorry, Tim, to hear that this was your experience. Um, please uh, reach out to me personally or to our, our team here at this email. And we'd love to try to work with you to come up with a solution. That's all you have to say. You don't have to talk about why they're wrong, what the misconception or perception is. The idea is that you, you don't bring that level of engagement there. That's behind the scenes, but you let people know you care and you want to engage with them. And people see this. That's the really important piece of this is that people watch and see, does, do they respond to comments? Do they respond to criticisms or respond to, um, you know, positive reviews? People need that kind of feedback. So respond to every comment, comment on others posts as your business profile. So um, there's ways that you can, with your business, comment on different people's uh, posts that they're making, you don't want to just comment on people's posts just for the sake of doing it. Um, it should be relevant to uh, people that are within your niche. And if they're commenting on yours and you want to start building a little bit of engagement with them, you maybe comment on some of their things. Um, but, but definitely engaging with people in that way, um, both personally and as a business, are, are, are both good strategies. Texting or sending video thank yous to new followers, super powerful, um, especially when they're customized. So you get a new Instagram follower, you can send them a little, send them a little video, you know, hey, 
uh hey stacy Corey here's the ceo of abc company and just saw they followed me on instagram uh just want to say thanks so much for that hope you're having a great day boom send it you can do videos within instagram for example and all the other platforms have their version of this too. People love the customized videos because it shows that you're taking time or your team is taking time to engage with them. And that begins moving people closer to becoming super fans uh, than, rather than just casual followers. Video thank yous to your most active followers. Asking happy customers for reviews or kind words. Hey, so-and-so, would you mind just sharing about your, your experience and leave a couple of kind words on my Facebook profile or on my Google My Business? Um, that's a great way to engage with people. Having a referral program where you're rewarding people for referring you to others. Um, having a loyalty program for repeat customers and clients. Optimizing your Facebook Messenger to engage with new visitors and followers automatically. Take a screenshot of this, folks. We we went through several several here, and there's a lot more. Um, but the idea is that you, when when we talk about engaging people in dialogue, these are the things that you want to think through. And there's a whole lot more out there uh, of ways that you can engage with people. But this is a place to start. And you know what? Just pick two <laughs> to start with. Again, you don't have to do everything here. Just pick two and just kill it. Just just absolutely just go all in on a couple of these and you're going to be surprised at how much engagement you get back as a result of your efforts. Engagement can be a type of nurturing, right? I mean, you have touch points and connecting points and trust building um, moments that are just super powerful. This is a great list. Yep. All right. And the last section that we have for you folks today is suggested tools. And um, and then we're going to have some time for questions at the end here. So let's uh, let's wrap this up here, Tim, with some tools just to help you wrap your mind around getting this social media strategy into place. So um, if you want to go to that next slide there, Tim. So obviously, social media platforms, there's a lot out there. Facebook, LinkedIn, all the ones we're familiar with, the few that maybe you're not so much. The idea is, again, choose two platforms that, that you want. To, to use and just dominate. Which platforms do you use? Our recommendation is to start with the two that um, you're most comfortable with, but also keep in mind, where does your target audience live? If you are mostly promoting to millennials, then you're gonna wanna be on Instagram and Facebook. If, you're, if your main uh, target audience are business professionals, LinkedIn and Alignable are, are great. Um, whatever it is, you got to keep those things in mind. Where are you most comfortable already and where are your target audience living? Again, both demographic and psychographic. So start with two, dominate. In terms of some tools, this is, uh, this is uh, Answer the Public, the tool that I mentioned earlier where you literally just type in a keyword and come up with all these searches that, that people are actually using to find information about whatever the topic is. And it, it spits it out in this kind of uh, uh, amoeba wheel here. And, and it has questions that begin with why and where and what and which and can and how. Um, and you can download it as a, as a CSV file as well. So you don't have to like try to you know, read it around the wheel. It puts it into a linear format for you. Super powerful tool. It seriously is a, it's like a best kept secret for coming up with content ideas and it is free. So definitely check it out at answerthepublic.com. Airtable is kind of like Google Sheets on steroids. It, it takes a uh, table organization to the next level. You can invite collaborators. You can um, color co coordinate things. You can have uh, you can attach images, you can come up with your whole content strategy and plan. Uh, so that way you can just keep things organized. Part of what is beneficial about Airtable considered, uh, compared to something like uh, Google Sheets is Airtable uh, has a lot of automation features with it. So if you're a nerd and you like automating things so that information you put in Airtable also goes into Trello and also goes into your CRM, Airtable has um, options for that, but at its very core, simple service, it's a, it's a spreadsheet with a, a little bit more functionality to it. Canva is the online graphic design creator tool I mentioned earlier that has a lot of templates and in uh, in all sorts of categories of, of, of graphics you can make, Facebook cover photos, social media, just general square posts, 
Um, you can do flyers and posters and whatnot as well. Um, but, but the lowest level free tier of Canva lets you do social media images for free. If you upgrade, you can print out posters and whatnot. But Canva is a really user-friendly tool um, that you can design and, and look like a professional um, when you're putting content out there. Crowdfire is a social media scheduler that we recommend and we use uh, for, for managing multiple platforms at the same time and posting content to all these platforms at the same time, in particular on certain days at certain times. It's actually scheduling it out in advance to save you time. So you don't have to sit down on a Monday and go, oh shoot, what is it I'm gonna post today? <laughs> You'll already have it in the queue. You could take a Sunday, plan out the whole week if you want come up with three ideas and, and find the pictures, create the content, schedule it out. It'll post it automatically for you. It's a wonderful tool to get started. You can have up to 10 scheduled posts at a time uh, to begin to automate and streamline your social media scheduling to save you a lot of uh, time and, and headache. We do a whole training on these tools. So pay attention next month and we'll be able to help you get dive, dive a little deeper. We use all of these tools at one <laughs> point or another. Uh, we built our company's social media on Crowdfire and Grapevine 6. Grapevine 6 is kind of a little side note, um, probably should be an honorable mention of some kind, but, but Grapevine 6 might be worth looking at for generating uh, third-party content uh, to supplement even what Crowdfire has. Cloud Campaign is uh, a, a much more advanced uh, social media scheduler that really the, the power of it comes when you have um, a team of people. Um, you can you totally use it as a, as a freelancer as well, but this has AI built in. It actually has Canva built into it as well. You can create your posts and, and schedule them out, but it lets you unlimited posts to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and now Pinterest just got released as well um, to, to post to all these platforms at all at the same time, as many as you want. There is no limitations. Um, there is a, a unified inbox so that all messages across all your different platforms can go in one place, um, like direct messages. All comments can be seen in one place. You can respond to everything. Has deep analytics to tell you which posts perform better than others gives you uh, hints and ideas, and they have a whole training academy. Um, this is a program that uh, that we we sell. You'll get it as a better offer through us rather than going through them directly. It's just because of the partnership we have with them. But this really is, if you're ready, again, no matter what size company you are, but if you're ready to take your social media to the next level, Cloud Campaign is where it is at. So you can ask us more about that. Hashtagify, if you're wanting um, ideas and kind of hashtags to post, um, on your, in particular, Instagram and uh, Twitter, um, hashtagify.me. If you type in a generic keyword that's related to your industry, it'll give you a, a word cloud of other hashtags that tend to be used a lot with your chosen one, uh, your chosen hashtag, and give you some ideas to put out there to help you with your discoverability. Bonjoro is a great little tool. Um, for personalized video engagement where you can just send a quick video to somebody. Um, it's, it's part of an automation system where, um, you know, if somebody subscribes to your email list or they download um, a, a PDF from you or they um, in, in, interact with one of your Google ads in some way or there's a number of different things. But the idea is that when somebody does something you use a tool like Zapier, whole other conversation for another time. Uh, Bonjoro can let you send personalized emails to these people that you have their emails. Um, and so it'd be like literally the video idea I gave you earlier about Instagram. Bonjoro can do this kind of stuff for you. Hey, Timothy, so glad that you just um, downloaded my PDF. Really excited. Hope you find a lot of value out of it. Let me know if you have any questions. Boom. People love the personalized video aspect. And finally, referral ping pong. Tim, this is your brainchild. Why don't you talk about this a little bit in, in relation to our social media strategy? Yeah, I think that uh, the days of, of just looking at uh, introductions through an email or, or even a pers personal invite or, or trying to call, you know, call each other and trying to say, hey, you should connect with so-and-so are kind of waning at this point. Social media, 
platforms are really the best place to give introductions because there's context. And so we recommend playing uh, referral ping pong with your power partners, your customers, your team members, and make it a game, have fun with it. We have a whole training around this internally for our team. And so if you wanna know more about how we do that, uh, let us know, but here's the point. Use Facebook, use Instagram, use LinkedIn, use some of these platforms to make introductions, Twitter, let, use, use all these platforms, the platform of choice that you like and start making introductions, ask people to reciprocate in some way. And I think you'll find that there's a natural, uh, you know, law of reciprocation that happens and give, give and take and, and giving and receiving that happens with that. So that's fine. Absolutely. All right. Um, so your action assignment for this week is um, we've got a social media refresh checklist uh, to update all of your social profiles with consistent and relevant information. Uh, this, the reason why this is the homework is what better time than now to make sure all of your profiles match everything that you do and making sure your language is the same. We talked about that rhythm of execution earlier um, and consistency. Um, having, having your message be the same across all of your platforms is key. Imagery, taglines, et cetera. So um, I think we have the screenshot of it, uh, Tim, in just a minute here. But in case you missed our previous assignments, um, these, these are it. There's the four mini ones from the blueprint, make a hundred connections on LinkedIn and choose two tools to try, uh, of our apps that we went through last week. Um, we have all of these posted in the group as well. Uh, maybe you can go to the next, um, yeah, we have this, go to the next slide, Tim. I want to show everybody the checklist. There it is. So you can take a screenshot of this. Uh, which is the, the social media refresh checklist for you. Um, this has Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter in particular because these are the most consistent in terms of having like a cover photo and some different pieces of similar information. But you can use this for your other platforms as well um, as, as relevant. If you want a, uh, an interactive version of this, we do have a PDF that you can actually check off um, if you're one of those kind of people. And if you are, make sure you drop your uh, your email into the chat box, whether you're watching live on Zoom right now or on Facebook uh, now or later, and we'll make sure to get that sent over to you. And as a bonus for everybody today, so just real quick, uh, this is your homework is to do this checklist, check it off and take a picture or the screenshot and post it into the group to let us know that that you've done the homework. That's that's your challenge assignment homework. This, this is week. it. This is the last one, right? I mean, this is the one that makes the difference between you earning that thousand dollar reward and not this one right here, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Good. And then uh, uh, this again as a as a reminder, what your reward is: the thirty minute session, visibility service, and graphic design service. And uh, Go to the next slide, Tim. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, as an extra bonus, uh, we've we've created 365 days of social media content ideas uh, for you to use. If you're literally just like, all of that sounds overwhelming. I just need something given to me to give me ideas. We can do that. Comment social with your with uh, with your email address in there into the chat box, and we'll be sure to get this sent over to you as well. Very helpful. Uh, resource that our team put together uh, to help you take your social media to the next level. All right. Well, uh, Tim, uh, let's uh, maybe stop the screen share so I can see people's faces. And if we have any questions, um, would love to answer any um, either live or Stacy. I don't know if there is any um, in either of the, the chat areas today. Nope, there doesn't seem to be any questions happening that I can see. Okay. Anybody have right. any questions that they'd like to ask? If you want those checklists and the 365, um, let me know and I'll get that off to you. Corey, I did have one question. Um, I've been noticing, and maybe this will start a chain of a couple of questions here, but I've been noticing that social media groups in particular, and, and even just, just like, Facebook pages, business pages, different things. They're, 
there tends to be a certain personality that kind of just posts random fun things that they enjoy themselves, like a picture that was beautiful or had some like sort of related inspiration to it, to what they do, but not, not really as, as connected to what they do and who they are. Where do you think the balance is to this kind of random posting of cool, fun stuff versus like relevant to what kind of you do and who you are? Well, <laughs> it, it depends on your personality and your industry. So um, I know people that and I know this isn't exactly the answer maybe people want to hear because everybody wants to quantify everything, but it really, it really does depend. I know, I know um, businesses who they are known for their quirk. That is what they do. And they get a lot of customers out of it because the content, the quirky content though, is still related to their, to their okay. industry. And so it, 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 I, there is definitely a balance of when things could be a little bit more serious or a little bit more, uh, direct or a little bit more um, contemplative, but it, the important thing is that it supports your overall goals. If your overall goal is just to provide content and, and value and that's it, then do that, whatever that looks like. And, and again, matching your voice. If it's to hopefully get clients out of it, believe it or not, not everyone on social media is actually trying to get customers and clients. They just want to provide the value the natural outcome of that though, is that they'll get, they'll get clients out of it. So, so the balance is you have to do what's, what's right for you in general. If I were to quantify it, gosh, um, I would probably say that uh, to it, of that 80% of the value add kind of idea, educational, inspirational, humorous, whatever it may be, uh, 50, 50 <laughs> um, and experiment. And if you're finding, start with that, start 50, 50. And then if you're finding that certain posts engage with people better than others, then stick with the kind that engage with people the most rather than doing things that nobody cares about. So what I'm hearing you say is experiment, but think through what your overall goals are, especially if you have a group or a business page, like think through it. Don't be random unless it has some kind of quirky tie-in in other words have some kind of intentionality to what you're doing don't just post uh, a random thought that has no tie-in to what you're doing like make sure there's some kind of general awesomeness that happens around your either personal brand or your corporate brand depending on what you're kind of promoting exactly yep. okay good so relevance is important but you can get fun with it. It doesn't yep. have to be, it doesn't have to be cold and, and, and just staying in just one little lane. And I love that about the way you've trained us today. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. Any last question? Uh, we got time for maybe one question at this point. Yeah. Any question? Cool. Good. Good job, Corey. Let's wrap up today. And um, if you want to reach out to us, please just light up the, the Facebook group, the private Facebook group, and we'll get to you. It, 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 we're, we're, we're good about making sure that our tribe is connected and shoot the tribe itself ends up answering half of these questions in a very interesting and fun way. And, and then we're monitoring that to make sure that nobody's going off, off track too much. So we'll, yep. we're good if you just pop into the giver marketing private group is what you want to look up, or you can go to that link that was at the bottom of all these slides. That'll get you there too. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great, Corey, great job. God